so many stories that I just did not get to today, and I really just need to hit on them really quick. We're going to go to that. Uh, well, you know what? Let's let's just off the bat go to that commercial because I am just so disturbed by it. I, I mean, literally, the people are singing, oh, beautiful. And then they go to the card, and the people on the card are, are singing, and they're like, due to new government regulations, it's going to be easier than ever to get home from Canada. No, it's not. It's more... It's more dictatorial than ever. It's more Nazi-esque than ever. That's the real deal. So let's uh, let's play this, and then we're going to go to Mike, Ryan, and Jordan on the other side of this clip. Hit it. Oh, beautiful, for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain. For purple mountain majesties. Above the fruited plain. On June 1st, 2009, new document requirements will make getting home from Canada, Mexico, and the Caribbean by land or sea more efficient. Now isn't that beautiful, America? Learn more about the Western Hemisphere Travel Initiative at GetYouHome.gov. Does anybody else want to throw up by seeing that? Could it be any more propaganda the way that they did that 30-second spot? I mean, gross. Ew. Disgusting. You know, I, I wanted to get to IBM seeks to build the computer of the future based on insights from the brain. I wanted to talk about the Pentagon's Beetleborgs. Yes, the first wireless flying insect cyborg, a remote controlled beetle, have been developed by engineers at, at Berkeley. Uh, if you want to just check it in, just type in Beetleborgs. It's it's right here. I mean, I cannot make this stuff up. We, we have to, I, I mean, just about every animal out there is being digitized. And we talk about it. And your kids are getting ready to play with a, a new Hanson Robotics robot called Xeno. You'll see them in homes in the next five to ten years. I promise you that. I promise you that. That's if you're around to see it. You know, they, that's if the CDC doesn't get their way with the mandatory shots for everybody in level six. Let's pray that doesn't happen. All right, let's, let's jump to some callers. I mean, I've covered so much news, but I have so much more to cover. It's just unbelievable. Even a three-hour spot doesn't seem to be enough. Uh, most of the time, and that's just too bad. Let's go to Mike in Illinois. Mike, you're on the air. Uh, Jason, hello. Yes, sir. Jason, yes, hi. Um, we know, what we do know is, uh, you know, people have been gaining a lot of weight over the years, uh, specifically like 10 years, or you know, from processed foods. And uh, everybody, a lot of people have said, uh, well, maybe people are just lazy and this and that. But, you know, processed foods, you know, the, the body uh, can't really metabolize those. And then, you know, I mean, so that's what we sort of do know. Uh, but but and another thing we know is the uh, processed uh, corn syrup has mercury in it now. And, that, I mean, that, that is totally unbelievable. I mean, I, it is I, just, unbelievable. I can't believe, I can't believe that, we're, that we're, you know, people don't even know about this. I mean, and, and uh, you, you know, it's you're, with this toxicity. And then, uh, again, what we don't know, like the GM food, I mean, we don't, we don't know. We know that people have gained weight over the past 10 years because of the processed food, but, but now we got this GM food, and we don't even know what that's going to do to us. And not only and that, that, let me say this. This, this, is, you know, this is getting outrageous, you know? It is outrageous, and Australia now has openly started to put GMO, uh, or, yeah, GMO food in everything, and they're not labeling it otherwise, and they're saying if you want organic food, it's going to cost you more, and they're not going to label right. the beef and the corn, and everything right. else that they're right. growing no up. No labels. No, they're not going to put any labels on it. It's, That's right. L listen, to, listen to this one thing. That I, you could just read, read articles on the Internet. Over half of the rats born to mothers who ate GM soy, 56% uh, were dead in three weeks, as opposed to 9% mortality rate in rats whose mothers uh, ate normal soy. Now, the morph morphology and biochemical structures of rats is very similar to humans. This is... This is crazy. Listen, it is crazy, and, and a lot of great points. I wish your connection was better so I could keep you longer. Great points. I thank you for the call. Yeah, it is outrageous, and I do think that people need to you know, educate themselves on Codex Elementarius because if they do you know, ban organic farming and they do regulate all the food that we have, yeah, our, our defense system, our immune system is going to get to the point where we can't ward off the simplest of diseases, where we are you know, malnutrient beings. And we are unhappy. Depression will go through the roof. They'll be able to drug us even further. They'll be like, well, what's wrong? We'll be more susceptible to disease. The mortality rates will go up. And unfortunately, that's the plan. They're talking about culling the herd, thinning the herd. And guess what? If you're listening to this program, chances are you're part of the herd that's going to get thinned out. Pretty gross. Let's go to Ryan in Florida. Ryan, you're on the line. Hey, Jason. This is Brian in Florida. Okay, and, gotcha, uh, bro. Good, good 
no no problem. It's good to talk to you again. Uh, listen, uh, I've been in contact with you quite a bit, and, and you, I've got two comments. One, on the clip you just played, look, I grew up going in and out of Canada um, my whole life. Uh, I've been there. I, I can't even count the times. And uh, I always uh, thought it was a lot harder to get into Canada than it was to get back into the United States, uh, going both ways. And that's crossing over the Ambassador Bridge there in Detroit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not saying I think this is a good idea for this new ID program. I just think a little stringent questioning on the point of uh, the border security that's there might help go a long way towards uh, keeping uh, elements that they don't want in out. <laughs> Yeah, but that's not uh, what it's yeah, about. Yeah. You know that. It's about tracking oh, tracing and RFID. No, I agree with you, man, because, you know, I'm an upstate Absolutely. New York guy, and I've been up to Canada, too. It's, you know, it's usually not that difficult. You you go up there, you show them your U.S. license, you tell them why you're going there. As long as there's nothing going on, they're like, all right, we'll see you later. Exactly. You know, but that's not the way it's never it is been anymore. a big deal. Yeah, it, never. It, it never has been a big deal, and, and I really hate the thought that it's, it's going to become like uh, traveling to Europe now. Yeah, no, it's out of control. What else you got for me? The, the other thing that I have to talk to you about, uh, I'm, a, I'm an independent documentary maker here in Florida myself, and I've been working on a film called Three Weeks in September for a number of months uh, trying to get the word out about 9-11 first responders and the health issues that they're facing. And uh, recently I've had a problem with a gentleman uh, who I know you had a run-in uh, during Loose Change 2nd Edition at the very least. I don't really wish to mention his name, but uh, there's a lot of video of you having this conversation with this gentleman. He has now, in the last 96 hours, been uh, spamming my email box. Well, let me uh, warn you about him, all right, because uh, that's actually an uh, – yeah, I thank you for the call. Um, that guy was in the 2nd Edition on the um – Basically, there was extras when I was down at Ground Zero on the fourth anniversary, and he was an auxiliary fireman, and he actually gave us an interview. Um, I, I, he's, a, he's a lunatic. He's a schizophrenic. I've been to meetings with him. He, he's hot. He's cold. He, again, he gave us a full interview, and then he turned the tables, and I, I, unfortunately, some people out there are just mentally ill, and the less attention you give a mentally ill person the less that they will bother you. Uh, it may seem like a full-on assault at first, but just, you know, that's somebody I haven't even thought about in years or talked to in years. And uh, I think the last time I saw him was actually the memorial for Daniel Wallace, where he just did some really appro- inappropriate things there. It was the wrong place and time for him to say what he said. And he's just a bizarre individual, and it's really unfortunate that he acts that way. Um, let's go to Jordan in Georgia. Jordan, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Jason? Good, man. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan. I really appreciate what you guys are doing. And, uh, I just wanted to call because I, uh, you know, until I, I started listening to you guys, I started listening to you guys through, uh, George Norrie and Coast to Coast. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was right on the bandwagon with the whole global warming thing. And, you know, until I started listening to the alternative science and, you know, the idea about the solar cycles and that's really what's taking place here mm-hmm. as far as global warming goes. Uh, you know, but the thing is, I'm a little concerned because there are a lot, this is kind of off topic, but there are a lot of, you know, other uh, degradations, you know, that are going on. I mean, there's the economy, that's that's one approach they're having, just destroying the economy, but they're also trying to destroy the natural ecosystem, so we can't be self-sufficient. It kind of goes in line with your previous caller. Mm-hmm. Um, the more they destroy natural ecosystems and, you know, make us not able to live off the land, uh, the more they do control us. So I think... You know, it's it's very important for you guys because you, you are on the air and there's a lot of people listening that you do make a distinction between, you know, the myth of the global warming and that and also the idea that people shouldn't just dismiss the whole idea that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying you're doing this, but I think it's important to make that distinction that another way to combat this whole you know negative movement is to, you know, buy organic, you know, use recycled products. Because it takes these money makers out of the picture. I mean, you look at the plastic. Well, well hold on. Let me stop you here. Let me stop you because I'm with you. On, I'm with you on the organics, but you got to watch out on the recycling thing. Um, you know, I don't necessarily usually agree with Penn and Teller. They have that uh, program on Showtime, Bull Blank. Yeah, course, I can't yes. say the other one, but they did a really good piece on the entire industry of recycling, and and it's Johnny nonsense. So I'm with you on the organic, uh, buying organic, and bottles know, too. Yeah, and yeah, you know, no another way to do it, man. It's petroleum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, well, listen support your local economy you know i i live i mean now here in texas now but you know in upstate new york i live right next to an amish community and uh, they would park in the grand union parking lot and you were able to get corn and basically all the vegetables that they grew there at a great rate and it was actual food if you if you support your farmers markets if you support your local economy if you grow a victory garden that is a huge blow to these people if you start becoming more and more self sufficient in other words you know if you've got a pool if you're still somewhere in the middle class you haven't been devastated by this economy yet 
get it running on solar panels. You know, my friends have been running their pool on solar panels since the early 90s. There, there are so many ways that you can start to get off the grid, become more self-sufficient before this nightmarish legislation slash police state comes into play. So I think that those exactly. are good concerns. And, and I always say when I'm talking about, you know, global warming and the whole thing, listen, we're not perfect. We do pollute the earth in a lot of cases. But the problem is these same companies that are promoting this global warming and carbon uh, credit agenda are the same ones that are truly polluting the earth. They're the ones putting the high fructose corn or the mercury in the high fructose corn syrup. They're the ones that are re really, you know, polluting the air, polluting the water, you know, legitimate polluting. But then they try to say, oh, it's human beings and CO2 that are bringing in global warming. And if you're my age... You know that they they started it off with chlorofluorocarbons in the ozone layer, and they've totally done like a whole 180 on the logic of it. 